Welcome back to Jessie Junction. Now, those who know her will tell you that she's an amazing balance of boss and friend. Always happy and always checking whether the people around her are okay. The first female CEO of KICC with an amazing personality despite her professional success. I have known her personally for a while because of her amazing support to the art industry. Nana Gishaga finally makes it to Jesse Junction. Welcome, Nana. Hey, Jesse. Karibu sana, Keno. I know, Keno. <laughs> Took a bit of time, got my yeah. visa together and the highway with the potholes and everything, but I'm here yeah. and I'm loving it. Have you ever been to Keno before? I haven't. So this is the first thank time. goodness for Google Maps. Karibu. Yeah. <laughs> Karibu <laughs> sana. You. Thank you, thank hey, you. Do you ever speak Kiswahili? Kidogo. Kidogo, kidogo. And that's about it, yes. <laughs> kidogo. <laughs> kidogo. There's a difference between Kidogo <laughs> and Kidogo. 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 So welcome, Nana. Welcome to Jesse Jackson. Thank you. It's thank you. It's my pleasure having you here. Good to be here. Yeah, good to be home. Yes. Oh, yeah. By the way. Exactly. Good to be home. People online say we are married. Yes. So this is your house. This is my house. You're not going nowhere now. This is my couch. That's your couch. <laughs> Fantastic. But the end, I'll pick a chai. Uh, <laughs> that's what you get for being too comfortable. <laughs> no, I'm actually a very good cook. Yeah. Yes. But well, you know Do that I... already. What are you talking about? I cook for you every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because people people actually would wonder. Nana Gishaga, the CEO K I C C like and you know girls call it like nana. So like that nana, that's what they think. Nana. Do you ever cook like do have you ever cooked like matumbo? Okay, well that's that let's go slowly. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've not I've not uh, not done that. Uh -huh. Um but no, I mean I can I I love Nyama Choma. So I can make dry fry and all of those types of things, obviously. You can, make nyama choma. Yes, I can. I can. Nyama do choma that. is not made in the okay, house. Okay, it's not. You go you and go eat to it exactly. Yes, and eat fine. Nyama but choma. what I mean by that is, if I've got friends over, uh -huh. a good barbecue, I can do that. But um, now moving it more so with what you also see, like on Instagram and all of those kind of things. Yes. So um, bone soup, I'm very good at that. So I do that. Um, so even with that, so I mean, I can cook. Practically anything. I'm not very good at baking. Mm -hmm. That's why I never, you know, make make cakes or anything like that. And if I do, it's in a box. And I just add the ingredients. But, um, and also I'm not, like with anything, I'm, I am I don't follow the straight and narrow. Uh -huh. So if it's a recipe, it can be there, but I'll always have to add something else, you know. If it says milk, I'll add cream. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> if, it's, if it says sugar, I'll add something else. But no, I love to cook. So and you've now, never made something like matumbo. Do you no. know what is matumbo? Yes, it's the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> and if and if I got that wrong, then we're going to be editing that out. <laughs> no, but matumbo. Yeah, it's matumbo. The, yeah, it's, and they also call it towel. Towel. Yeah. Yes. Is that towel? No, right. yeah, That's what I don't amazing. like. But my no, my favorite and actually my favorite meal. Yes. Yeah. Is mara. 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 Cleaned properly, obviously, uh -huh. you know, so uh -huh. Mara, very crispy, you know, grilled, really, really crispy. They cut it, uh -huh. you have a bit of salt there, you have kachumbari over there, and then also ugali and skuma. And my goodness, and also nyama choma as well. But nyama choma. Meat. But you make for yourself nyama choma. Nyama choma, I do. I also even sometimes when I want and I don't want to go out, I'll even get Mara. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have it, you know, Sagrit, they can do it for you, or uh, Jagunas also, <laughs> or the hood. So either I order it and it's cooked and done, or again, if somebody has slaughtered a goat or whatever, obviously a goat because cow intestines is a bit big, so it's a goat. Um, then they bring it home and no, Mara is the intestine. Mara is the intestine. Is the curly bit? Bado ni matumbo. No, there's two very different things here. What do you mean? There's Mara, which is the curly part, uh -huh. right? The intestines. The ones that look like this. Yes, bloop 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 bloop. Those ones. And there's matumbo, which is the towel. The stomach. <laughs> so leave the towel out and just give me the rings. All oh, that nimatumbo. Fine. So that's that's who do he. I like one side of the. Okay. Mutumbo. Have you ever had mutura? Mutura. Yeah, that's the now in the sausage. Kikuyu sausage. <laughs> yeah, it's the sausage. Yeah. Yes. Blood sausage. Yes. Yeah. I love yeah, that yeah. with a bit of when the, you know they do it. And again, I'm you know I'm not promoting anybody here, but mm -hmm. I've had the best mutura at the hood when they add chili. You know, where? they add chili. Where? Where is that? The hood. The hood. It's a hotel. The hood. The hood. Or oh, the hood. Bezier. Where we No, the chill. hood. The restaurant. The hood. The, hood. the restaurant. Yes, the hood. 
There's a place called the Hood. Because when you say the Hood, eh? Oh, no, it's uh, not. For us, you understand, it's where we... Like, Kino is my hood. You're, you're crazy. Yeah, Kino is my hood. Yes. So I thought you were saying <laughs> no, no. from the hood, I was like, she went to the hood? So, <laughs> let me if tell you. If you ever have mat uh, mat matura yes. with a little bit of chili, they, in the mixture, they add cut up chili. Uh huh. Oh, that's good. So I'll have that occasionally. So, <laughs> but now, I need to take you uh, mm -hmm. to have real matura. What you had is matura with chili. You need to it's have the same with the motura na kafiri firi. There is kafiri firi. There's firi a difference is, between yeah. kafiri firi the red and chili. chili. No, the red chili, the stice, the red chili. No, that's okay. chili. Okay. This other one is kafiri firi. I'm up for it. I'm, uh, you don't know kafiri firi? No. I'll take you to have what's, kafiri firi. What's kafiri firi? Kafiri. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's the, the red pepper, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. And the green one. Mm hmm now the green one. Okay. And then mixed with lemon juice. Oh, nice. That would actually yes. be very good. Yeah, in a katakatwa kitogo. And then you just, you know, you put some. And the and lemon it's cooked in is there. you squeeze yeah, the lemon of juice when you're, on top of it. Yeah, but when then it's you, cooking uh, or just before you eat it? No, you don't cook mutura. You bite. Yes, okay, fine. But then you add the lemon as a garnish on top. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but you have to cut the mutura yeah. and then you put it inside it. And then you take it. And mutura is only eaten when it's dark. You yeah. can't have it during the day. Yeah, so you need mutura. Yeah. But I've had it. Though. Okay, anyway, but your type. <laughs> your type. I'm I'll up for it. I'll take you there. I'm very, very much. Now that this is your first time in Kino, yeah. we have mutura in the evening. Brilliant. I'll make sure you go and have one. Well, I'm not leaving I'm here. Because I'm sure now you, you <laughs> had a mutura and chili. I need to give you mutura and kafiri fili. But I had the one that? where they cook it inside, into, into it. Yeah. It's cooked already in it. Yes. Yep. That's what I had. Yeah, it's yeah. cooked inside. You know. The chili's cooked inside it. No, no, the chili's not cooked I had the inside. one where they cook That's what I'm telling you. When they cook it inside it. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's the one you want. That's the one I had. Okay, yes. okay. I'll so make it's, some it's, order and tell them to, to mix you. that one with. Mm -hmm. But you didn't grow up in Kenya, right? Um, Until I was seven. I was here until I was seven. And then after I went away for school. But I was back, obviously, every holiday. Mm -hmm. But I was, um, I was outside. Most of it in the UK. In the UK, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you went to high school. You went to high school in the UK or US? Boston, Massachusetts. Boston. Mm. A lot of Kenyans. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, the, the university you went to the UK. Yes. Amazing. Now, after you studied all that, you went to the UK and you, you, you had a diff let me call it from the age seven, you had a different upbringing. Okay. The cultures are different. Then you came back to Kenya and uh, started working here. Mm -hmm. How has it been the connection between how you grew up, like in the UK and US, and the connection with the people here that went to St. Cyprian Boys High School, like me, or went to some high school in our country, and they work for you? How, how is the relationship? Um, I don't really, actually, I don't even, I have to say, it's probably, you're the first one who's probably brought it up to make me think about it. I don't, because... Um, for me, wherever you're educated or wherever you are, it's, it's performance. Mm -hmm. You know, you have scholars who've gone to Harvard. And quite honestly, they've not really done, they can't put sentences together, surprisingly. You know, or they're very good at book smart, but not street smart, you know. So um, in terms of with my staff, I never look at it and be like, oh, it's because you weren't educated out here. It's because of that. It's your character. So that your character is, is more of, I wouldn't so much say education. I'd just say it's your traits, mm -hmm. who you hang around with. Now, again, it doesn't have to be that, um, you know, if you're a, a bad person or you're a bit, you know, rough around the edges, yeah. it's because you've been in Kenya. I mean, you've got bad boys everywhere. You yeah. know, you've got bad boys everywhere <laughs> yeah. uh, or bad girls. So with that, I think it's really, um, I've never actually really thought about it, to be very honest. Because you um, relate so well with people here in the country. And then, let me talk about the people I've seen you relate with, the celebrities here in Kenya, musicians, comedians, and all that. And... Uh, and the people at KICC. I've seen you interact with people at KICC. And I know, I, sometimes I struggle to hear your English. <laughs> Let me confess. Sometimes on phone, you tell me something. Uh, uh, text, text. Like, text uh, me, text okay, me. Okay, just text me <laughs> so I can read it. So how, has, how, how are you able to make this relationship with the people so easy? And they actually understand you. And you say, okay, I'm coming. Or oh, did I see you there? Innate. That's not a Kenyan <laughs> thing. That's British. That is... How are you able to manage? Um, 
gosh, I think it's just, I love people. I love, I love, I'm a social person. Um, and I think it's, you know, even people watching, you know, uh, of course, we're now in, in COVID, the pandemic, but before that, um, I'd be very comfortable just going and eating at a restaurant mm -hmm. by myself. Everyone's like, oh, you're going to go eat by yourself? I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, you, and you have to be comfortable with your own self. <clears throat> but again, it's then, and it's not like I go to a restaurant by myself and then start joining other tables and doing all, but I like to watch people, um, interact with people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I like to, you know, he, see and hear people's stories. Everybody has a story to tell. And I think it's because I've got a story and I, I use my story to motivate other people. You know, um, I think I, that's what makes me wanting to get to know more people. So I can, you know, once you communicate and talk to them, you then find out other different things about them, you know. Um, and once you understand somebody's life story, you understand their character, you know. So um, regarding that, I think it's just being a people person. I love to engage people. I love to chat. Um, so, of course, this, during this pandemic, it's a bit hard. Yes, You know, yes. I've got uh, my three kids and some of my staff at home. So that's who I'm mainly interacting with. But we communicate on phone and all of that. But I mean, that kind of contact. So, yeah, it's, I just really like communicating with people. I learn a lot from people. And as you were saying, in terms of at KICC, it's, um, it's fascinating. Yeah. You know, and, um, and, you know, you're always, and you have always told me before, you know, gosh, you know, Sometimes people are scared to come up and talk to me because they think that I'm yeah. going to shut them down or I'm some big monster or <laughs> really rude and all of that. And I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm just little old me. Yes. I'm Wanjiko. Yes. So, oh, yeah. yeah, actually, your, I, your real name is Nana Wanjiko yeah. Gishaga. Yeah. Wanjiko. Do you, do, do you have people Shiko. refer to you as Shiko? I do. Wanjiko? Family? It's, yes. That's what I'm actually referred to as Shiko. Yeah. Do you understand Kikuyu? Wanjiko. Say something and we'll see. Oh, Hanatia. I'm good, thank you. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm saying Kikuyu. What are you? Timur. I can get it here, but coming out. Well, coming out is the hardest part. Yes. So you, your children. Yes. You have uh, Huru. The yes. first one is Kenya. Udi. Udi. You Udi. remember Udi? You remember my yeah. birthday? Yes. You saw Udi. him, the one who's really, who ate so much pizza. Yes. Then had to lie down because he got sick. <laughs> But that's Udi for you. Udi, <laughs> yeah. Kenya, and... Udi, Jomo. Jomo, and... Ke and Kenya, Ke Uhuru, yeah. Udi, Udi is called Udi Gishaga. Udi, karaoke, karaoke. Gishaga. Gishaga. Yes. Then Jomo, Jomo. Moreka, karaoke, Gishaga. Uh -huh. Then Kenya, Uhuru is his first name. Yes. Karaoke, Gishaga. Kenya, Uhuru. Why did you name them like Kenya, Uhuru? Double barrel. They don't have like... It's like, called double barrel. No, it's... Yeah, of course. They it's they're not called like Jaden... You know, <laughs> you have a lot of kids going. No, yeah, no. Well, Why uh, didn't you go for those kind of things? No, because, um, well, Udi, my son, is named after my father, mm -hmm. Udi Gishaga. So, again, that's what we do in our, in our culture, is you do the naming <laughs> that way. So, um, Udi, my eldest, is named after my father. Because, uh -huh. um, obviously, you do your parents. Mm -hmm. Then after your parents, you go to your siblings. Yeah. And then you can go to your uncles or grandparents or like that kind of thing. So Udi is named after my father. Mm -hmm. Jomo is named after my brother, because I had another boy, obviously. Yeah. But uh, so Jomo. And then Mareka is our family name, the yeah. Gishaga family name. So um, with that. And um, uh, Kenya, Uhuru. I've always loved the name Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, and that was going to be a rap. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not having any more kids. So it's, <laughs> But no, so, so Kenya and Uhuru, of course, after my uncle. So there's Kenya Uhuru, so it's a double-barreled name. Uh -huh. um, and then, again, the thing I've not addressed, the other name is Karaoke. Uh -huh. um, Karaoke is the last name of their father. So I, uh, instead of them having their last name of their father, uh -huh. um, because obviously I was never married and I'm a single parent, um, so they still carry their father's name as a middle name, Karaoke. And Janaya. <laughs> Yeah, those funny names. You, you're calling your, your daughter Sunshine. And you can't even pronounce it. Sunshine. <laughs> These are names with meanings now. And so, then Gishago so is the name that you know, you know, carry it on. Name. Yeah. How many are you in your family? Um, it's my sister, uh -huh. Soya. Soya is the She's the oldest, one. yes. Uh -huh. And then there's Jomo. Jomo Gishaga. Yes. The Jomo Gishaga. Yes. Ure Jama Moja. Yeah. The one behind the president. Yes. Hey! 
And then you. And then me, I'm the baby, yeah. You're the last born. I, I, oh, no wonder. <laughs> no wonder. No wonder you will find you at KCC chatting with those, those uh, NYS <laughs> boys. You, come here. How are you? You good? Let's go for lunch. I'm alone. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> last born behaviors. <laughs> no, but yes, the last born, it's. Um, so now you, you work at KICC as the CEO. Yes. When you were growing up, like when you went to school, and did you ever envision yourself working at such a big organization? Nope. What did you want to be? Athlete. Huh? I was an athlete. I was a jock. I was those conditioned athletes. Mm -hmm. I was very good at basketball, extremely good at soccer mm -hmm. slash football, and I was exquisite at track athletics so basketball was my worst sport but very good at it soccer second best and um athletics sprinting um i broke records i qualified for the olympics as as you know so but i was an athlete i would at school i'd be the person waking up you know with everybody else who was training at five o'clock uh -huh. train before school i'd have this diet that you would not believe you know once upon a time i had a six pack before my kids <laughs> <laughs> um, washboard stomach, uh -huh. and just yeah, very competitive. I mean, I would cry if I'd get beaten in, on the track um, during re meets. You know, so I can I can relate when you see, you know, your 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 athletes running and they they don't do their time, but they've done very well, but they've not done their best time, mm -hmm. but it's still amazing, you know, or it's that conditioning and just that thoroughness and and everything like that. So. That was me. I was I was gonna be sports. I was. And you uh, you wanted to be a kimboy, Ezekiel kimboy. Tomboy. Yeah. I was. I used to you know uh, play around with my brother uh -huh. growing up. You know he had a motorbike, so I'd ride that until I banged into a wall and busted it up. Um, <laughs> and then he got another one and told me to leave it alone. Um, climb trees. Um, age seven. Mm -hmm. um, I was also known as Grace Jones because I had a box. What? I had a box haircut. I rocked a box with the lines and everything from a very young age until I kind of had to grow up. And I think that was, what, 16? Couldn't so get away with it anymore. Boy. I was a tomboy. So at what point did you become this, this <laughs> girl now that you know? Look at me now. No, I'm kidding, yeah. I'm kidding. Uh -huh. um, I guess later on in life. But I'm still, you know, I'm still, I still love my trackies. <laughs> I love my sneakers. Do you still run around, exercise, do all that? <laughs> We're getting back to that now, yes. Uh -huh. but yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. I mean, I've started, obviously, with this 100-day um, lifestyle. So I'm mm. in my last five weeks of that um, with Coach Rosette. It's been amazing. Um, finally found a diet that works because it was also getting a bit hectic, you know. Every time I'd go onto Instagram and say, I've got a diet, I'm working on it. And everyone's like, mm, yeah. let's see how long this lasts. But no, in a good space, feeling really good. But in terms of when did it change? I think it was um, very later on in life, you know. You thought, um, this is it. I want to... <laughs> yeah, I was an athlete. I never thought I'd be corporate, definitely. Did, did you have guys hating on you when you were like this? Yeah, I mean, boy. always. That's one of the guys, you know, and it's uh -huh. like, you're really cool. You're super cool. Nana, <laughs> nay, nay. I have <laughs> a <laughs> tattoo, nay, nay, you know, one uh -huh. of the guys. But I was also one of the guys. But then, um, and again, I guess I played the part if I needed to. Because once you're in high school, mm -hmm. of course, because at age 16 is when you're basically into high school. Yes. So it was towards high school is when, um, actually, when I went to the States. So that's when I kind of transitioned. So, um, yeah, so you makeup, girl. girls, <laughs> guys, the attention on you, all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, you know, you run, you have some good guys and you have some bad guys. But that's, that's life, I guess. What are some of the things that you can remember about when you were in the States that maybe excited you mm -hmm. or made you, maybe made you really, really regret? And you're like, I wish I was just at home this life in the united states or in the uk is not good for me um i think also it's it's um you know a lot of people you know look at me and they go okay you let you led a life of privilege yes i'm not going to debate that i'm not going to contest it i'm fortunate to um i've had a, a parents who are able to take care of me who are able to um look after me and uh, send me away for school and i'm very grateful for that um maybe there's been times as well where i've not been too grateful and just taking it for a ride you know, um, and, and, and not actually really equating the monetary value to that. You know, a lot of money was spent. Um, and I, I learned that the hard way, you know, with the drinking and not taking life seriously, all of that stuff. But again, you have those challenges because, again, you know, you're coming from Kenya, Africa. 
you're going to the States, um, primarily a, a, a Caucasian setting. Mm -hmm. So you are the minority. Um, again, and there's always going to be hazing. There's, you're going to be you're going to be facing that. You face it anywhere. You know, um, it's real. It's there. Um, but it's it's something that you it's uh, not everybody was like that. But you're going to have it. And I'm not saying it was always at the school. It was also in the city that you were in. You know, and of course those days um, with that. It's but even nowadays people are facing it. But then again, you know, people can't understand you're from Africa. Um, how did you get here? And how are you not on scholarship? Yeah. You know, so again, um, you would then be picked on for having money. So um, you, you, you know, keep the group that you're going to have there. Um, realize it's a small time in your life, you know. And I don't know if it was by design. Um, all the schools I did go to were very international. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that came from the, the hazing, from the town, you know, the older um, the, 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 the local residents because all of us were international students so at age 7 when I went to boarding school the British mm -hmm. were actually the, minor, minor, the minority um, because we had people from Hong Kong, we had people from America we had people again from Australia mm -hmm. everywhere, so all at the school so again it was um, you know you just get on with it, make fantastic connections still friends with some of the people today from age 7 can you imagine yeah um, and, and you, and you realise, because you're going through it at the same time, because when you go into town where you can go and have a pizza and shop and do all of that kind of stuff, you feel it. And it's not only me getting it because of the colour of my skin, yeah. I'm getting it because the people in the town are yeah. not understanding how foreigners can afford to send their school to mm -hmm. one of the best schools in the country at that place. And um, <coughs> so we felt it like that. But again, you brush it off, it's not an everyday circumstance, it certainly didn't um, hinder me in any way, I think it, it was a lesson, you know, some people take it and they start being very um, angry about it, mm -hmm. but you learn to be compassionate, you learn to understand different cultures, you know, and um, yeah. At that time when you were in America and you used to feel like, you know, you're the only one here and they will pick on you, yeah. did you wish that you just started in Kenya where no one would pick on you? You know, Everybody's black. It wasn't even that. No, because, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't even that. I think the thing that I would have a lot of times wishing that I was at home, but it was because all my friends were home. My, my friends that I grew up with yeah. were, were still in Kenya, at school in Kenya. So you can imagine it, it wasn't really... The moments I would have in America mm -hmm. or in England thinking, gosh, I wish I was at home, was mainly because probably all my friends were here. So, you know, you'd have that phone call with your friends or you'd come back for the holidays and um, you, you miss a lot. You miss mm -hmm. a big chunk of the, of the school because everyone's been doing it together. Then you come and you're kind of playing catch up. Would you do the same to your children? Um, well, now, Jesse, that's a... You take them away, they go study, and you have experienced how it feels studying abroad and your friends are here. You know, as America. much as I even say that, it's not enough to say that I wouldn't send my kids away because you have that but again that's when you also get to know who your real friends are because no matter how far away I was from them when I would come back for the holidays you'd again you'd also pick up where you left off you know so your real friends would stay with you and then that's how you become a close-knit and that's how my real close friends you know became my close friends because it didn't matter if we were apart when I'd come back, I would do that. But to answer your question, would I send my kids away? Um, a lot of the times people talk about you send your kids away for better education or for with whatever type mm -hmm. of thing, circumstance or anything like that. Um, you know, again, I'm, I'm also dyslexic, you know, so that also played a major role in that. Um, I was able to, to have a lot of um, help with, with tutors and, and everything like that growing up. Um, now, that's not... The reason why I went away, because, of course, my brother and sister went away, too, and they're not dyslexic. So before anybody now says, oh, well, you can't use that as a reason why you went away. But um, it, sh it sure helped. But now moving with the times. No, I think I might maybe just <laughs> save the money for my kids, uh -huh. get very good Internet, uh -huh. get a very good working space for them at home, an annex, uh -huh. a wing of a house. And let them live there. Because honestly, the way we're moving now is online. Yes. You know, so do my kids necessarily have to leave the country for that? No. 
education is at the click of a button now. Yeah. So um, for me, it's not about getting on a plane that makes it better. It's the actual quality of education. And also, I think um, I've lived my life. So I can't tell my, my children or my boys, you're going to be a doctor. You're going to be a lawyer. You're going to, you want to be a photographer? Great. We're going to get you the best classes for you to be able to do that um, and, and be able to make a good living out of it. You know, if you want to be an athlete, we'll get you, instead of having a tutor where you're reading the books, then we'll, you'll get out into the garden and coach and train. So I think it's really about circumstance. I think people need to really look at that. And the level, the playing field has leveled up now, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. So it's, it's now just really how much a parent or a guardian is going to push yeah. their child. Yeah. yeah. And you've talked about dyslexia? The dyslexia, thing? yes. Dyslexia. Yeah. So you learning you disability. You can expound to, to mm -hmm. the viewers that are watching mm -hmm. about what that condition is, or is it a condition, situation, or what exactly? A fancy word you're using that could just <laughs> be, yeah, you know. <laughs> for somebody that is sick. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. No, yeah, so Dysle yeah. dyslexia is a learning disability. Um, and it's not unique. A lot of people have learning dis disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, so dyslexia is a type of learning disability where you have um, issues reading. So when I say issues reading, you may skip a word, you may flip the word and look at, look at it the other way around. Your brain does that. Um, but again, like I said, it's not, it's not unique. It's not that I'm one in It might be actually billion. a talent. No, but again, I mean, it's, heck, Einstein was dyslexic. No, I, I'm saying, I'm saying oh, you dyslexic. No, but what I mean, but when you say and, A-N-D, you, you would see? look at it as D-N-A. And you just read as DNA. Yeah, you'd read, you'd, you'd do it like that. So it's it's those kind of things. It's not every single word. Okay. It's just some just certain some certain words. Also, again, studying, and again with dyslexia or learning disability, you have HD, HDD, which is hyper hyper def, HDD is hyper definition disorder, or ADD, which is attention deficit disorder. So I also had attention. Deficit disorder. You didn't pay ADD. attention. You're, you're, you're following fluff. Someone can throw something and you will That's follow it. Yeah. But again, having said that, but I also want to make it very clear, as much as we're laughing about it and all of that, yeah. there are a lot of people who have it. And one of the things is, you know when you're in class and you're younger mm -hmm. and you've always got that child who's brilliant, yeah. but the teacher says you're being disruptive. Calm down, focus, da, da, da. stop being disruptive, stop messing up my class, stop doing whatever. They personally are not doing it on purpose. Yeah. You see, it is the way that they're wired. But again, that is where teachers really have to take that time. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to have teachers who were able to then notice that and know that and say, this is not disruptiveness, this is an actual learning disability. So what does that mean? Well, we'll give you extra time when you need to take an exam. So you're not under pressure when you're doing all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Again, they are, there is medication that you can take, but you don't even have to go really down that route. If it's your severely ADD, you can take medicine, which is Ritalin, that just helps you focus. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, 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 a, it's a condition. You don't, it's not severe. It's not, I don't want to say it's like diabetes where you have to take your insulin. Mm -hmm. There's different types of it. So I was able to, I did take the medication when I was younger, but I actually was a lot worse on it. You know what I'm saying? So again, and it was for a very short span, and then I just didn't have it after that. And you just like, okay, well, you know what? You're not majorly disruptive. You're not majorly a problem. And it's not, and they call it a disability. It's not a physical disability. It's just a classification that you will get. Yeah. You know, somebody who is over your ideal age. So for instance, if a child is meant to be, I'm just giving you an example just to show you. So for instance, if a seven-year-old is meant to be 12 kg and for whatever reason they are 15 mm -hmm. they're classified as obese yes. but they're not yeah. you know what i'm saying so that's yeah. the same thing that i'm the exa example i'm trying to give you with this add type of thing okay. so you just you just kind of get on with it so for me it was it's and it's something that people need to really be aware of because when the teacher labels you yeah. as disruptive the class pick up on it that's how bullying starts that's how all of that other stuff is an it's an entry way into that so again people really need to think about that because like i said 
later on in life, just by being barred at that particular point, mm -hmm. would change that child's life forever. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, if yes. I would be a very different person if I was having those kind of places where the teacher's like, you're being disruptive, you're doing all of this. You're I'd be more time. angry. Yeah. I would be more abusive. I would be more angered because I'm frustrated because people can't understand me. You see? So it's really important about how one is brought up. And it's got nothing to do with money. Um, because these are things that you can't buy. Yeah. This is time. Time and energy and um, your, your, your home environment. You know, a child can really pick up on things. So again, um, that's why I said it's really, and now, as you mentioned before, throwing that whole education thing into the mix, the, level, the playing field has never been this level before. Yeah? Uh, internet, money can't buy you that. Yeah. You know, what you learn, being innovative. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you can have all the money in the world, but you may not be innovative. You may not be able to come up with one good idea. Yeah. Or you cannot pump that money in to change your child's accuracy or education level you know so it's um yeah but it's, it's something that people really need to it's never spoken about hardly because people really don't understand it yeah. or they don't think that it needs to be addressed but i personally do think it needs to be addressed just because of the repercussions it can have so you are able to overcome it yeah i'm, I'm always been dyslexic you don't overcome it you, you, okay so so it's not like something that is treatable you can self-teach yourself it's like therapy so it's, where somebody it's, helps you through you can, but also again, and that's why I had tutors. So like the same thing is that algebra. For mm -hmm. everybody, it can look like whatever. We don't understand. But once a teacher explains to you X over Y or equals whatever, that kind of thing. But again, even with dyslexia, I learn different tools. So again, um, if I'm going to be speaking, um, one of the beauties of maybe my learning disability is you have other things that come out. Yes. I have a fantastic memory. I have a fantastic, you remember fantastic a lot of memory. And even to the point where it, can be, it, it is also photographic. So I could look at something and cram it, and that's that. You know, so, um, but then again, it's not that I would now look at it, be able to, I can then close my eyes and look at the paper, but now when I'm giving a speech, it's about speaking slowly when I'm looking at something. Okay. You know, um, sometimes you'll notice I might skip a word. But everybody does that, so you don't really know. It's not noticeable, but it's just learning about um, taking things slowly, being allocated the proper time in an exam. Um, what else is there? It's um, yeah, it's it's literally it's it's a, it's a time thing. So how so how how can a parent actually tell that maybe their child has dyslexia? Like, well, I'm not a doctor, so please, I'm waiting for little Bart to come <laughs> in here and say this is not a professional medical. Advice. Yeah, not professionally, but, but how would I how think, would someone I how would you want mainly to be Mainly with mainly with ADD, attention deficit disorder. Mm -hmm. That one you can find out very very quickly. Mm -hmm. So again, if you've got a child who's sitting on the you know that's always fidgety, moving around, doing this, and it's more than normal, a child is going to be hectic. Yeah. Let's just get that sorted out. So if, that's going to come with the territory. If you, a child is always going to be on the go. Mm -hmm. But one where they can't now sit down and concentrate, that's now if it's time for reading, or they okay. get bored easily. But then now how you can change that, and another way you can do that is engage your child. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you know your child likes dinosaurs, yeah. let's not be reading about volcanoes or the <laughs> earth. Because they're not going to... Just read even, about the dinosaurs. Read about the dinosaurs, and you'll engage them for a lot longer. <laughs> so find out what it is your child likes to do, and use that as the study things that you want to, to, to be able to do the tools for that kind of thing. So it, it, it works. And, um, but again, they can <laughs> self-entertain yeah. themselves. And, yeah. Thinking about reading about dinosaurs and volcanoes. Heck, you know. Well, with the, <laughs> no, I'm just saying, as an, it could be anything. It can be, you know. Yeah, I get any, it. But, yeah. but uh, <laughs> dinosaurs. <laughs> you so many about Ndovu. Mm, yeah. No elephants. Elephants, so yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and the lions. Tembo. And yeah, all this. and mm. Tembo. Now, if I may ask, that time when you're in America and you had tutors who assisted you in that one, and then uh, there, was some, uh, there was some point where you, you, you parted, you had your fun, you are that started before. That started before America. That started here at Carnival. Yeah, that was where? Carnival. Carnival? Yes. You parted here? Yes. In JK's. 
as well. Yeah? In Westlands, yeah. Yeah, you are a party girl. I was, yeah. You did your bit as a young I girl. I threw down. Yeah? I threw you, down. You, you <laughs> 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 this is what we say. Uliwakilisha. Uka control. I wasn't in control, but yeah, I was <laughs> controlling the bar. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Uka seririka. Yeah. Do you know what is kuseririka? No. Is what you did. Went too far. Kusiririka <laughs> <laughs> is like, you know, you club hop or you do whatever. Oh, oh, okay, okay. But I know I just would stay in the same place, but yeah. no, I partied a lot. I, yeah. So is that, is that the time you got into alcohol addiction? It is. And I think, um, like I said, I started young. So I was, that's another thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was fast lane, you know, so partied a lot. And um, just to give you an idea, I was checking into rehab at age 21. So when people are starting, I'm checking out. Mm -hmm. So I started very, I started at a young age. I started, um, and I think also, again, it was, like I said, it's more of, um, you don't party out. You, 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 I used alcohol to mask a lot of things. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of things that I wasn't okay with. There were a lot of things that I, you know, had had issues with and, and like any adults, adolescent growing up or young person growing up like that kind of thing. But when it hooks you, it hooks you, you know, and then um, I dr started drinking to forget. I started drinking to, 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 to feel numb. And before you know it, you're going from a functional alcoholic to not remembering what happened the night before. Mm -hmm. So that's where I got up to. And at age 21, it was a very... You wouldn't want your um, your child to go through that, and um, I, I it was only in rehab that I I learned that alcoholism is an extremely selfish um, disease. Addiction is an extremely selfish disease, um, and lack of a better word, I was selfish. I was a brat, um, and it, it, it thankfully it took me coming out of it to. Um, yeah, to realize I'd put my family through some things, you know, and um, and just thankful that they were able to still uh, believe in me enough to want to, for me to fix my life, you know. It wasn't easy. It took a lot, obviously. Um, it took, you know, um, my brother and sister also intervening um, and saying, look, that's, this is her last chance, yes, but let's get her some help. Because I had many chances, I had, like Lola, your, your, our, our cat here, um, <laughs> yes. uh -huh. uh, many lives, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'd gotten into accidents, I'd crashed cars. Um, during that same stint. During time. that stint, during that yeah. stint, and lucky to be walking, lucky to be um, no major damage, you know, um, you know. So, yeah, I partied, I partied a lot and just didn't really take life seriously. You know, there are so many girls. Yeah. I know, I know. I've, I've lived in, in this Nairobi long enough yeah. and I've seen people. I've seen how, you know, we, we have so many clubs in Nairobi and we've seen very young girls partying like, you know, what people call party animals. Yeah. They are there and they don't beasts. think. I call them like party, party beasts. Party beasts and club hopping. And they think it's fun because yeah. they're young, in their early 20s. And they think that the route they're taking is okay, is safe. What message do you have for them? Haven't gone through that and seen the dangers and uh, the the how easily you can how get easily caught you up. can get caught up and yeah. become addicted to alcohol. I think it's um, you know alcohol is also the the wor the best of worst vices. You've got hardcore drugs, yeah. you know. Um, I like I said I hate needles, so I never I never got that because you're drinking to a certain point where it becomes social, then it becomes an addiction because you're masking something, you're trying to disguise something, you're trying to numb something. So of course, alcohol is the worst thing to numb because you need to take so much of it yeah. to get numb. Yeah. Whereas if you do hard drugs, you need a shot and you're good for like six hours. You, see, you know what I'm saying? So in, in regards to that, what would I tell the young girls? You know, it's, um, and I don't want to sound like I'm judging, because I've, I've been there. So it's from a place of I've been there. Yeah. You know, um, you have your whole life ahead of you. And yes, I get it. Um, it's, it's that 
everybody wants to be in the cool cool club. Everybody wants to run with the cool kids. Everybody wants to run with, you know, the cool people. Um, and it's kind of ironic because in school, you have the cool kids making fun of the geeks, so to speak, or the loners or the outsiders. Mm -hmm. But they are actually the best placed people in a school environment. Your outsiders, your geeks, because they're not um, influenced in a bad way. Yes, they have a horrible time at school, but later on in life, they actually are the ones who have an easier time becoming somebody. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because um, they were not part of this in crowd and this in crowd is ruthless. Yeah. You don't have the right type of shoes or the new sneaks. Your group is even making fun of you within your group. You know, now yeah. if your parents can't afford it, what are you going to go and do? You're going to go and steal. You know, you maybe steal from your parents. You maybe in the middle of the night, go into your parents handbag. Yeah. While they're sleeping and take those that that money that's there to go and buy those shoes. But guess what? That money might have been the shopping money for your family to eat yeah. this coming week. You took but you're it. willing to risk that just because of a bunch of kids at school. You know, so I and like I said, we've all been there. And it's only when you've come out of it on the other side, you can then offer that kind of advice. Because when you're deep in it, you're deep in it. You know, you want that nice boy to like you. You know, you want that girl to look at you and be like, hey, you know, talk to you in the hallway. But um, the advice I have to give, and, you, and that classroom mentality, school mentality, has now, unfortunately, you don't graduate and leave it in the school. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, you've now got a big, of that, it's, the same, it's that same mentality, that same yeah. kind of character, but happening in the clubs, you know? You, Kawapi, where are you? Where are we going today? Oh, you know, then you're sitting in a group and you're like, ah, look at that person, look how they're dressed. It's the same thing you do. It's high school behavior, yes. but you've not graduated with it. You've now gone, gone and you're in your university. 30s and you're now still pulling this nonsense, you know? So um, dare to be different. Dare to go against the grain. Um, it's, it's gonna, and when I say against the grain of dare to be different, it is going to be painful. But guess what? You're going you're gonna to get so much more out of it. You know, um, and you'll only realize that after, you know, um, I still have friends who are still stuck in the bar. And they're not doing well. They're stuck in the bar. I didn't say they do it on the weekends. They're, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. You know, let's hang out and, and from lunchtime, let's go to the bar. Mm -hmm. My friend, we're clocking 45. Yeah. You know, what, what, what's this? <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? You can continue with this. Yeah. Is that the reason why you you are actively into girl child? Uh, you support <laughs> girl child. You want to see girls prosper. You want to change their lives here in Kenya. What you went through is it the reason behind why you you what, what do you what do you call? I don't know it? how it came about to be very honest. And I know we've had this conversation before. And you just like you know, and it was of course it was never planned because by now the gig would have been up. You know what I'm saying? You can honestly tell an honest person, and I'm extremely honest. You know, um, I have a, I'm a big softie. You know, I, I maybe come across as being like, you know, corporate woman, you know, CEO, all of that stuff. Yeah, when I need to be, I'll play that hat. Yeah. But again, there's, you know, I, I, I don't like to see people suffer. I don't. So with my foundation, I want to have the best rehabilitation center in Kenya that will help a lot of people mostly girls no no for rehab no anybody. anybody but for the girls i want to have a foundation that will pump money into have a system and a network the corporate sign on internships you get given jobs you get given but then again if you're already at that place in time you will get funded now it may be a loan but we'll give you as a start off the foundation may become a shareholder in your company and offer you that legal advice give you all of that type of stuff but again we're not going to take over your company we will be a silent partner and give you the money you need to start off with because we are guaranteed you will do something with the idea that you have yeah you see what i'm saying instead of having to now go to some sleazy old man yeah who's breathing down you and thinks that he can just sexually abuse you and empower you just for the fun of it because he's bored in the office and some girls come and ask for the job that's 
You've never, you should never have to go through that. When are you going to start this so that we don't keep on talking about them all the time? No, I know. Year in, year out. When are you? When yeah. is the D-Day to start it's, the rehab and also a rescue center for girls? Yeah, well, Not maybe for them sleeping there. No, of course, but you're saying it's cancer, exactly for counseling and for helping. Then and they go, yes. It's actually an empowerment mm -hmm. center. Yes. Is what I would like to have. Empowerment center. Empowerment center. When are we going to do this? In a year's time. I'd like to give myself a year from today. So we're in the 6th of August, is it yes. today? Yes. Or whenever it is. From today, Yes. moving forward, a year. I'd like to at least this time next year um, be announcing. I mean, like I said, I'm already doing the empowerment center, just working on my phone, yes. helping girls, yes. you know, or somebody. And, and the thing is, though, I can't help everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'd be stupid to think that I can help everybody. Mm -hmm. That's why I need everybody else's support. I need the corporate support. Mm -hmm. You know, I need, I need um, you know, other, other f f for myself to fundraise. I'm very good at fundraising, mm -hmm. you know. So instead of always fundraising for other people, um, fundraise for that foundation. So this empowerment uh, center mm -hmm. starts? Count on me. Thank actually, you. Actually, I'm a bishop, actually. <laughs> I'll be coming there to preach to them. No, exactly. And quote the scriptures for them. Yeah. If it will help. That no, is. of course, of and course. And rehab. I've never been to rehab, but I, need, I think mm. I will, with your story, I'll come and learn more so that we no, can of help course. more. And people. it's even about motivational. Yes. You know, I mean, it's, you don't have to have gone through it. I mean, if you're going to be talking about that side of it, yes. But even just empowerment, letting people know. I've come from here. You've got a fantastic, amazing story as well. You know, Jesse, you need to tell your story. Yes. A lot more, yeah. you know. Um, and you're, an, you're a huge role model. A mm -hmm. lot of people look up to you, you know. So, again, it's the same. It's that same thing. It's, um, you know, and use your platform for good, which you do. And, keep and thank doing you that. for supporting us that. also. Oh, definitely. Thank you. Every time we come yeah. there, we do, we do events, a lot <laughs> you of do. cases. You do. We like it. Exactly. Okay. And also, I want even people to know that, I mean, yes, right now I am the CEO of KICC, but um, I'm not always going to be the CEO of KICC. Yes. You know? So that's why I, I like to, you know, keep things very separate. Yes. You know, because again, this foundation and all of that is, is something that's come, it's my life story. Is it's that where you'd like to retire to? After KICC, after working in the corporate, would you, is that where you are planning to, to go do to the for center? the rest of your life? The center, your center, um, that's going to happen. Uh, I think, year? I mean, I have an avid role in it, but I don't think, I mean, I'm, I'm not ready to retire. <laughs> <laughs> we'll support you. Yeah, well, thank you. We wish you all the best. <laughs> thank in you. In that project, thank all you, I know you. is next year, it has to start. It right? has to. It's already starting now slowly, but it has to be it a big to. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I want to thank you for coming for this yeah. junction. And thank and you. Be, and now that story about girls, I tell you, it's now, you even drew me closer. You're drawing my heart closer <laughs> now <laughs> because it's so touching and girls actually need that help. Yeah, they do. And thank you that you're that person who wants to stand in the gap to see the future of this country also being put in the hands of the girls. Because what uh, uh, we were recording a show the other day, and somebody, uh, there was a lady director. Yeah. So I read the script where it says, what men can do, women can do better. She just shouted, no! <laughs> we know that women can do better. Women have already done and done it excellently. <laughs> <laughs> so she told me to change. And she said, change that. So we changed to what men can do. Women have done it and done it more excellently. So That's good. Wish you all the best. Thank Look you. Look at you, KCC. Baka in a camp here nowadays. We even forgot the, the architectural design yes, and what did. inspired <laughs> it. We are now looking at KCC Yanana. You know, well, it's not Yanana. It's not, it's, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not going to be there for, you know, um, too much longer. You've transformed the place. No, and I'm extremely, mm. extremely proud about that. Um, thank you for acknowledging that and seeing that, um, you know, but a lot of people don't want to talk about it or acknowledge it. But at the end of the day, I'm not doing it for acknowledgement. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it for, for futures to come. And I have to say, it's, it's not a one-woman show. I have an amazing group of, group of a KICC family team, yeah. you know, from the board um, down to the members of staff, you know, and um, it's... Again, there, it's a very young group of people. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm surrounded by young people the whole time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. 
but yeah. it's good. And like I said, it's um, and I just hope that you know, I just leave. The o the only thing is that you just leave. I leave KCC better than I found it. Yeah. And you're doing fine. And then you moved on to somewhere else. You don't sit there and it's like you know, the next time I'm sitting here is. 10 years from now and it's a conversation of Nana, when are you going to leave KICC? <laughs> yeah? Now you no. you started off here and now you're... No. No, for us... Do your time we, and even the you, next get you get in and you get out. We will be talking about... Now, the next the next one will be about, oh, so this is the Empowerment Center. Mm. Oh, you started it. Amazing. Mm. So I've seen this. So when is the graduation for the girls? Or when are we... Those will be the stories. Yeah. And we want to also, on behalf of uh, maybe comedians and the rest of the ones that came uh, and you supported us with a venue at KICC, maybe you didn't know, but before you became a CEO at KICC, we never used to do shows there. Not because uh, we, we couldn't afford or anything, but it all requires support. No, of the course. The support, the teamwork that we have found there. I'm saying it so people can can know why, why now these things are happening mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So... Come and eat there or just get a cup of coffee and sit by the fountain. You know, <laughs> sit on the grass. And no, sit on the KICC. You know, people you sit on it and take a picture and like you. Picture, and sit yes. and be, have you ever taken one? I have a picture. I, Where you I found sat my on KICC. No, not sitting. I'm just point, I'm doing the pointing. No, you need to sit. That one is more fun. Yeah. Where girls sit like this and below them is KICC. <laughs> Maybe when I'm leaving, I'll do a, you know... <laughs> It's been amazing. Yeah. Like a postcard type of thing. Yeah. So we appreciate you for coming on Jesse Junction. Thank you so, so much. Thank you're you for amazing. having me. Now, you told me you know, you know Swahili and Kikui, right? So you're going to close the show, but you're the one closing for us. And you say it in Swahili, I see. Like, like thank you for watching Jesse Junction. Uh, we'll be right back after, after this. You say it. Yeah. So I can do bits and bits and then we splice it all yeah. together. We in edit Kiswahili it all together. No, no, I mean, that, can we say like, if I say Asante and then I stop uh -huh. and then you tell me the next part <laughs> and then I say it. So when you say it all together, it's... Uh -huh. But if you say it, then let me try. Okay. So you Sama. say it and then I'll... Bali. Tuna kuom. Na Jesse Junction. Kuom. 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 Yeah, kuom. Like, come. We are kuoming. Like, tuna kuom. So the first part was... Usiende maali tunakuwa mtu sana on Jesse Junction. Usiende maali tunakuwa mtu sana on Jesse Junction. Na Jesse Junction. Uh -huh. Say it there. Usiende maali tunakuwa mtu sana on Jesse Junction. Wow. Wisdom words from the KICC CEO Nana Gishaga. Wow, I can't believe this. Have you heard that? So, girls, watch out. This is a savior coming your way. Nasa ike no mzima sasa. Finally, nimemleta, nana. Ameshikuwa na kavumbi. Nikoshua tu. Kahoma, kana nyemelea. Well, subscribe, ndiyo nikuambia kama amepata hako kahoma, eh? Jia vumbi ya kinonton, kinoleshwa, kinoleshwa. So, subscribe, subscribe. And now, because of that, because of the wisdom words that we have heard from Nana, there is one Greek saying that says, raise your words, not your voice. It is rain that makes flowers grow, not thunder. See you next time on Jesse Junction. I'm your host, MC Jesse. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs>